Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to address the question, is ageing contagious? Now I know what you're probably thinking, of course it's not contagious. Visiting my older relatives won't make me age faster. And yeah, fine, correct, but that isn't what I'm going to talk about in this video. So before you click away, I am still going to address the question, is ageing contagious? But on a different scale, because instead of looking at it, between individuals, we'll be looking at this in the context of within an individual, which will probably make it an even more entertaining and interesting video. So before I go any further, I just want to say that this idea for this video came from when I recently just read this Nature Aging Review article, Asynchronous, Contagious and Digital Aging, which if you can have access to it, was a very interesting read, so I do recommend it. And so obviously one of their sections was talking about is aging contagious. And so I thought, you know what, this sounds like a really interesting topic. I'll explore it a little bit further. So here we are. So let's get going. Is aging contagious? So what I really mean by this question is, does the aging of one individual cell affect the age of another cell? And more from that, does the aging of one tissue affect the aging of other tissues within our bodies? See, told you it was interesting. So one of the reasons why we'd want to maybe address this question and understand the answers is due to the fact that there's been a lot of research now that seems to suggest that aging isn't just a linear process and instead it seems to be asynchronous. For example, in humans, the cardiovascular system exhibits a much greater functional decline with age than the gastrointestinal system. And the same goes for different model organisms. Different tissues seem to age at different rates. And it can even be seen within a species for example, in one human study, they defined so-called ageotypes so that they could take into account the fact that tissues that age most rapidly differ from one person to another. And the second reason that we might want to be able to address the question, is ageing contagious, comes to the fact that it may help us better understand how to be able to prevent ageing and age-associated diseases. So for the remainder of this video, we'll first be looking at the evidence that seems to support the fact that ageing is contagious and also try and throw in a couple of ideas where ageing might not be considered contagious. And then at the end, given our conclusion as to whether or not ageing really is contagious, we'll say what does that really mean for prevention and how that might impact future work. So first then, in terms of examples, the best example, as suggested in this review article, is cellular senescence. And so cellular senescence, which I feel like I've spoken about so many times now on this channel, is characterised by two key characteristics. Firstly, it's a cell cycle arrest, so the cells stop dividing. And the second feature of senescent cells is its senescence-associated secretory phenotype, referred to as the SASP. And as suggested by its name, is a secretory phenotype that includes a variety of different inflammatory factors. And the current idea is that these inflammatory factors help to bring in immune cells that can clear the senescent cells. However, if the senescent cell doesn't get cleared, the SASP continues, which could result in chronic inflammation or has often been referred to as inflammaging. And this association of senescent cells with age is supported by the fact that senescent cells seem to accumulate with age and studies done on mice have shown that the clearance of senescent cells promotes their health span. But more specifically, there is evidence that seems to support the fact that senescent cells and their secretory phenotype may be demonstrating how ageing can be contagious here in the context of one senescent cell being able to induce another neighbouring cell to also enter senescence. And this is more formally referred to as paracrine senescence, with paracrine signalling referring to cell-to-cell -cell communication whereby one cell can produce a signal that alters the behaviour of a nearby cell. So in this case, you've got senescent cells secreting these inflammatory factors and other signalling molecules. And these factors can be sensed by cells in its proximity and also alter that cell's behaviour. And so as demonstrated in this Nature Cell Biology paper, they identified that oncogene-induced senescence in a cell can cause paracrine senescence in vivo, and they also identified multiple factors within this ASP that might be responsible. This included factors of the TGF-beta family, as well as the chemokines CCL2 and CCL20. However, this is still an area that's heavily being explored, and in many ways it is quite challenging to try and understand these non-cell autonomous interactions. But this is only senescence inducing senescence. What about the other hallmarks of ageing? Well, it's very interesting that I asked that question because I actually made a video last year that looked at the relationship between Alzheimer's disease and cellular senescence, whereby there seems to be a chicken and the egg scenario whereby it's not sure if the 
pathology that underpins Alzheimer's disease, that is the protein aggregation of two proteins, tau and amyloid beta, and the fact that there's also senescent cells in non-neuronal cells, including astrocytes and microglia. And so the question that seems very much unanswered is, are the senescent cells causing these proteins to aggregate, or is it the presence of these protein aggregates that are causing a cell to enter senescence? And so either way, whichever mechanism appears to be the correct one, or if both of them are at play, both of them do support the fact that ageing is contagious, whereby one offence can trigger a subsequent offence. And one of the reasons why this is such a complicated question is due to the fact that Alzheimer's disease, like other neurodegenerative diseases, are often referred to as protein folding diseases because their pathology is associated with protein aggregates. Tau and amyloid beta, as I mentioned with Alzheimer's and alpha-synuclein and Parkinson's disease. And so whilst initially protein aggregates in these diseases were thought of as a cell intrinsic phenomenon, whereby one cell accumulates the aggregates and becomes dysfunctional. Based on the pathology, it now seems that these diseases can spread to other regions of the brain. And the interesting thing about this potential protein aggregate spreading is that it's very similar to the biology of prion proteins, which are proteins that are actually contagious, whereby one misfolded protein can cause other proteins to also become misfolded. And in fact, amyloid beta, tau and alpha-synuclein have been referred to as prion proteins. Anyway, so far these examples have only really taken into account proximity in terms of ageing being contagious. We also need to take into account the big picture, and I literally mean big as in the brain-immune gut axes. I'm pretty happy with that segue. Anyway, I've been meaning to make a video on this for a long time and I probably still will at some point, so I'm not really going to talk about it too much here. But effectively, what the big axis refers to is the fact that there's communication between the gut, the brain, and the immune system. And part of this is actually due to the fact that millions of neurons and immune cells are actually converging in the gastrointestinal tract, but also the fact that these signals go both ways. So the brain can communicate with the gut, but the gut, due to the presence of different hormones and food products, can also communicate with the brain. And this also takes into account the microbiome. And this biosis of the microbiome has been associated with a variety of different age-associated diseases, as I mentioned in my previous video. And so this really is a big topic. But the important point that I want to make is that we heavily depend on this system to function normally and communication between cells in proximity and also systemically is so important for the regulation of a variety of different biological processes that are going on within our bodies. And so the scary thing is that our amazing bodies and our amazing system is also our greatest flaw in that dysfunction of one tissue or one cell can have the adverse consequence of disrupting other tissues. And so this leads me on to what does this mean for prevention? Well, one kind of obvious point is the fact that if ageing is contagious, it kind of escalates and kind of snowballs in its magnitude over time. And so starting earlier would be kind of the more optimal thing to do. However, we don't know what this optimal time necessarily is at the moment given the fact that rates of ageing differ between different individuals, and so likely prevention options would do too. And secondly, it seems to suggest that due to the fact that one tissue may be causing ageing in other tissues means that multiple strategies might be required. Another interesting point to make is the fact that if ageing is contagious, one way to prevent ageing is to stop the spreading. And so to do that, you really need to understand the communication systems in which the ageing is spreading. And then in this case, we would actually want to shoot the messenger. (laughs) Anyway, there are two main routes of communication. One is neuronal communication, so electrical signals between neurons. And the second one is communication within our blood circulation. And in fact, this kind of comes into play with the landmark 2005 paper that came from the Convoy Lab, whereby they joined the circulatory systems of young and old mice, so-called heterochronic parabiosis. And the remarkable thing was that the old mice displayed regenerative properties of their muscle and liver just by being exposed to the serum of younger animals. Again, this is a topic that I hope to cover in a bit more detail at some point in the future. 
So with that, I feel like I've given you the answer to, is aging contagious? I know I did say I try and find some evidence against this, but I just don't think I have anything strong enough to say. So yes, I think aging, at least within an individual, can be considered contagious. And that's due to the inherent need and requirement for cells to be able to communicate with each other and their environment. But I think understanding this process and taking it into account will help us better understand the aging process and ways of preventing aging. So with that, I want to give a thank you to my Patreon supporters. And as always, thank you for listening.